Guys, time to carry on how to treat Sicilian positions, this time one of the most difficult and one of the main sidelines against Sicilian, it's Alapin system, second move c3. So it begins after e4, c5, c3. What's the point of c3? Uh, the point of c3 is just to play d4. And when they play d4, they just want to build up a strong side. Probably one of the, at first glance, worst reactions is going to be the topic of this lesson. I just say at first glance because, of course, it's not this way. And it's going to be G6 approach. Why is it, um, at first glance, the worst reaction? Because it's a golden rule. Whenever they play, like uh, whenever black goes for G6 and bishop G7, white should be going with C3 and D4. And when they capture C takes, C takes, like D4, C takes, C takes, uh, bishop on G7 is going to be a bad piece. And it's certainly this way. So this could be a biggest mistake a black player can make if playing this system. Don't you ever play fourth move bishop g7 because they will play knight c3 and you'll never be able to uh, kick off with any d5 at any point afterwards. So after e4, c5, c3, we just go with g6. Our idea is something completely different. Uh, it's uh, highly positional, but in some variations, there are lots of nice elements of counter tactics. So get ready for it. When you play g6, of course, that all these Alepin players will go with d4. They just want to have a good center. c takes, c takes, and once again, and I'll repeat it, bishop g7 would be a severe mistake because of knight c3. So what do you do? You play important move d5, an exclaim mark on this move, because when you play d5, what are you actually trying to do? Break in the center and create an IQP, isolated queen pawn on d4. That actually means that they have to go with e5 and that moves like e5 or queen to b3 are uh, highly risky for white. In some of older Sveshnikov analysis, and by the way, Sveshnikov uh, is the guy uh, who was one of the main representers in the world of the second move c3 in the past 50 years. Uh, somebody said he suggested queen b3 with almost winning position for black. And uh, I asked one of my students, what do you mean winning position for black? Well, let's play. I said, okay, D takes, bishop C4. And I said, okay, E6. And he said, and here Sveshnikov said, go with D5. You open up the game. You have the strong battery and uh, black has lots of difficulty. I just have to give you a words of encouragement here. You have four different good enough moves to uh, play absolutely fine game uh, with the black pieces. So what are these? You can play, for example, queen b6, trading them to offer the queens and keep the material even on the board. That's one thing. Another thing is knight f6. When you play knight f6 and they take, take, you take by bishop, they can take on b7 because bishop c4. They take, if queen b7, you, you just play knight bd7 with a relatively not good but better game because you have a better development they just now uh, equalize the material and we have like uh, two pieces developed uh, they even have uh, potentially weak d3 weak square so we threaten knight knight c5 knight d3 they gotta go queen e6 you play bishop e7 they gotta go knight e2 to complete development you go with a great knight a6 harassing this queen with knight c5 i like this idea a lot Queen h3, and then you just go short castle. You gotta be at least fine, but that's the uh, probably uh, worst thing for black I can say in this position. And at least uh, equal or let's just say unclear position with the black pieces. If I was black, I would prefer this uh, playing with the black pieces. Uh, then uh, third possibility, apart from queen b6 and knight f6, could be knight d7. So that, that, that one is one of my favorites. So when they take, you capture by pawn. And everything looks like, what is this guy doing? So after bishop e6, knight c5, threatening queen and bishop, only move is queen b5, because otherwise bishop on e6 is lost. You play bishop d7, you trade the queens off, and you just take by queen. You're slightly better. 
because you have one develop piece, you have a strong outpost on D3, and black absolutely feels fine in this position. And finally, my probably most favorite movies, uh, probably the most original here, uh, along with 97, I gotta admit, it's knight a6. Same idea, just you keep this bishop open and keep the idea of taking by bishop on e6. Unlike in previous position where you didn't have that possibility. So, for example, if they take, you just you can absolutely feel free to take by pawn. And if they play like this, you just go and transpose into a position that we already analyzed. But if they play bishop e3 to stop knight c5, because please don't ever do knight c5 here, you would just lose a piece. Bishop c5, bishop c5, boom, check, and you lose the bishop. So you gotta go with knight f6. And what's so special, you absolutely have fine game with the black pieces. Although my vote goes to bishop e6. And when they take, you recapture by pawn. So if they capture by queen, you have a beautiful knight e7. And for how many time I have to repeat that the best defender uh, against the queen and the best defender of the king against the queen is uh, this knight. Not, not this knight. Usually the best defender of the king is knight. Uh, so uh, after bishop e3, you just play bishop c5 and they do not have uh, this queen b5 idea because you always can defend that with a queen d7. Now I give you four different approaches against at, the, at one point, even a fifth move queen b3 that was even considered to be the refutation. Lots of guys will take automatically on d5, and you shouldn't pay so much attention on this one. It's nothing. They've just created an isolated pawn, and you know what? When someone plays uh, with an IQP, isolated queen pawn once again, they should attack. And here... About what kind of attack are we talking about if the pawn is on g6 and bishop on g7? I don't think there is even attack for white. So we play knight f6, knight c3, and we play knight d5. That's another uh, important thing. How should we play against the IQP? You know two golden rules. I keep repeating them throughout these lectures over and over. Block the pawn. So we set the blockade. What's the best blocking piece? Knight. And second thing. Just keep on trading off pieces. And we're happy if they ever take on d5. But in some circumstances and positions, even we can take on c3 and create a hanging pawns. For example, if they go bishop c4, you can just go with the knight b6 and go with a relatively nice game. You absolutely can go with knight takes c3 and queen c7 or bishop g7 short castle as well. If they go queen b3, you just go knight b6, they go d5. It's an important thing because at the moment we threaten to take to play bishop g7. And uh, it's always better to have this pawn on d5 and it's considered to be a slightly better than the pawn on e7. You just go with Kamsky's plan from one of his games, bishop g7, castles, and I especially like the next two moves for black. Knight a6, where this knight goes on c5, and when you wonder, like, how? Oh, with the queen on d6. You go queen d6, bishop d7, and knight a4. I very much like this plan for black. I applied it a couple of times in my practice, and I had fantastic results. So you have knight c5, knight c on a4, and you just use the full, uh, you know, like, a power of the bishop on g7, as well as exchanging pieces and playing against um, isolated pawn on uh, d5. In this case, I got to be honest and to say that this uh, pawn on d5 is way better than a uh, classic isolated pawn on d4. At least it makes some pressure against the pawn on e7. Although, in this case, problem is we threaten queen a3 followed by knight c3. They got to take on d6. And taking on d6 and exchanging queens like this uh, now opens up another problem and front for our actions. It's at the moment, bishop c3 or knight c3, they gotta go and take win out threaten b2. And when they play b3, we just jump on c3 and win the bishop pair, followed by bishop b5. And if they go knight d4, you just go a6, rook a c8, and black is the one who's in the driver's seat in, in a game like that. So just like you see after knight d5, they usually go with the knight f3, 
you go bishop g7, bishop c4. If they force you to come up with your decision, once again, you can go knight b6 and castles. But I, I like in this circumstances, knight takes c3 and playing against the hanging pawns. You absolutely should apply the same rules against the hanging pawns like against the IQP. So exchange pieces and block them. So you go castles, queen c7 threatening both, pawn on c3 and bishop on c4, queen d3 defending both. And when you play knight c6, uh, most of these guys don't understand this because most of them jump with the knight on d7. Knight doesn't have such a big importance being on d7. You just go on c6. And this knight goes on a5, harassing this bishop. So after queen e2, you go knight a5. That's the point. And when they play bishop d3, haven't I told you previously what's the main idea? So block the pawns. Bishop e6. Open up uh, back rank. Possibility to play rook f to d8 and rook a to c8. Followed by bishop d5, knight c4. And maintaining control of the light squares and blockade with the a6 and b5 after fantastic plan for black in these uh, similar positions and finally since this is a lecture where i just present you like the main ideas of these lines what happens if they just go with e5 if they go with e5 that's absolutely the best for white and that's the most annoying one for a couple of reasons first of all we gotta play knight c6 first and when they play knight c3, they have to do that because any knight f3, of course, you should be facing with an obvious bishop g4 and you just solved it, solved this problem with an idea of giving it up for the knight, playing afterwards queen b6 where you go after the d4 weakness. That's why they have to make a nice, very precise, very accurate knight c3 move where they insist on development of their pieces. But at the same time, they just go with a further, uh, you know, like uh, control of the center and they avoid bishop g4. So we play bishop g7. And this is one of the main points of uh, this variation because having these pawns on e5 and d4 looks like having way better than against the bishop on g7. So let's take a look at this one. Uh, now they have so many options. I absolutely always claim that the only thing for white, only anything else is just great for us, is bishop e5. What happens if they just go bishop e2? If they wait, they still don't want to give us possibility to play bishop g4. No big deal, man. I'm going to go knight h6. You play knight f3, I'll play bishop g4, give it up, and play afterwards e6 and knight f5. Uh, if you force me, of course. You play h3 to stop bishop g4. Really? You want to stop this? Okay. Uh, you're never supposed to play knight h6 and to go with knight f5. Looks obvious, looks logical. But they will play g4 and your knight would be shut off. But you just play f6, undermining the pawn chain. They gotta go with e takes. You take by knight. You go castles. And you just jump with this knight on e4. All of a sudden, d4 becomes weak. You give a very nice... Uh, I've seen this in Dorfman's book, this typical uh, exchange sacrifices on the F file, typical for the French, typical for some other Sicilian positions, but I like it here so much. Rook takes F3 followed by knight d4. When they take, they, they should never take on e4 because d4 would be weak. And then we just go queen b6. Pressure on d4 is obvious. They can play bishop e3. We want to go rook b8, bishop a6. We also have some pressure. Uh, and some ideas uh, with bishop h3 or rook takes f3 afterward. Fantastic position for black. And finally, if they play knight f3, of course, by now you should have um, uh, should have been familiar completely with the bishop g4 things, because uh, when you play bishop g4, they not simply have problems with the d4 pawn, and it's always good uh, for black to give it up for the knight. They go now with the bishop b5. Now it's too late, man. I'm going to play rook, rook c8 and take by rook on c6. If you play uh, bishop e2, well, good enough. I'll go with a typical knight h6, knight f5. And of course, I'll take on f3 once you force me. I'm not going to even take on f3 unless you force me to do so, which means you're going to lose tempo. And finally, they go h3 immediately. Uh, be my guest, baby. I'm going to take on f3. 
So when you take um, a buy Quinn, I'm, you're just falling apart. I'm even threatening here. And fine, second thing, if you take by pawn, I don't even want to discuss these positions. I mean, you got to be complete patser if you don't like this one. They got a broken pawn structure, potentially weak pawn basement and d4, uh, pawn base, sorry. And that's bad. And that's why. Um, and that's why I told you previously that the bishop b5 should be the only move. Okay, no big deal. Let's go. Knight h6. Uh, we can't play bishop g4 yet. But okay, we're going to open up this possibility once we play knight h6. I want to go castle. I want to break in the center. I want to go bishop g4, keep this possibility. I want to go with this knight on f5 after the d4 pawn. Let's take a look at a couple suggestions. A typical developing move, but that's a reaction, would be knight f3. You just go bishop g4. You just take and play knight f5. Yes, maybe we have a weak d5. But you have terribly weak d4, and turns out that it's way more important than the d5 pawn. Knight g2 instead of knight f3. Castles, castles, knight f5. d4 is weak. They take on c6. Of course, they have to release the pressure. And by the way, this is their absolutely the most promising idea. Like take on c6, create these pawns, and afterwards block them with some, I don't know, knight a4, b3, rook c1 ideas. You play bishop a6. You play rook b8, and you open up the game with c5. Why? Because you got a bishop pair. So what? So you want to get rid of the blockade against these d5 and c6 pawns, and you want to give your bishops open game, especially because this pawn on d4 is supported by strong knight on f5. Finally, if they go with h3, what I expect to be done by most of good players, and I like this move, makes sense, makes perfect sense. They want to play knight f3, and you won't be able to play any bishop g4. Also, they want to go with g4 in some positions, fighting against this knight. So you got to go castles. Now g4 wouldn't make sense, because if they play g4, you just open up the game straight away with f6. He takes, and you take by e pawn. You, they can't play g5. Uh, your knight goes on d6, knight f7, knight d6. Your rook goes on e-file. You can even consider some f5 options at some point. Black is great. That's why they go with knight f3. Now you can't play bishop g4. Okay, we can do it. But we can still break the center with f6. Anytime they don't take, and of course they have to do it. For example, they go castles. You take and play six. Position like this is absolutely fine. We couldn't take on e5 because our d5 pawn would be hanging. And believe me, when you play e6, d5 is good now, while e5 pawn remains weak. What do we want to do? We want to bring the knight back on f7, go after the pawn on e5. Look at this. We threaten it like three times. And maybe in some lines, even go with g5, maybe in some other lines, go with some rook f3 ideas, followed by knight e5. Um, you just play a good version of the French, Sicilian, these kinds of things. When they take, you take by rook. Why do I like this taking by rook idea so much? Uh, I played it so many times, and my opponents were very confused when I took by rook. They didn't know how to react. I remember when I analyzed this position with my uh, ex-student, world junior champion, Alexander Ipatov, we found only one way for white. It was like 10 years ago. How should white play? And it's bishop c6. So when you take by pawn, you shouldn't take by rook because it makes no sense. They have control of the good outpost on e5. Castles knight f7. Look at this. We really have problems on the dark squares. But what's the problem? N not a big one. You go knight f7. And this is a golden defensive knight. And you just have a nice control of the game. They go rook e1. You go rook b8. Goes on the open file. b3. Fighting against the rook and makes it weak. Queen d6, fighting against both, uh, bishop a3 and bishop f4, bishop e3, bishop f5, rook f8 doubling the rooks, and bishop e4. Our conclusion was that black has certain ways of fighting for counter initiative. I do believe you have it, even though you have these problems with an e5 square, maybe bishop on g7, but at least you have an open uh, f file and you have a possibility to use this double rook stick. If they play anything else, like 
Bishop e2. <laughs> Come on, man. You didn't play bishop e5. Now to go back on bishop e2. Then you can just go with, for example, rook f7. Why rook f7? Because you want to create pressure here and you want to play knight f5. So after castles knight f5, bishop e3, queen d6, a3, bishop d7, knight takes a3, and rook a to f8. You want to place your bishop on the better diagonal, bishop h6, go after the pawn on e3. You want to break in the center with e5. If uh, that's not the only plan, you can also play bishop e6 over protecting like d5, but more like uh, preparing for plan like this. Queen d6 and rook a to f8. If you want to have a good plan, this is a good plan. Easy plan, that's it. They go bishop g5. I played probably 10 games like this. Your second exchange, by the way, that's a highlight idea and motive of this opening. Take on d4, threatening both, queen and the bishop. Uh, that's why they couldn't take on d5 because you exchange queens and jump knight c2. Queen here, not a big deal, baby. Knight f7, going back, harassing bishop, and after this, taking on b5 and playing e5. Whoever played French ever, he knows that with a bishop pair, with a d-strong hanging pawns in the center, e5 and d5, even though we're down on exchange, we gotta be much better or at least have an amazing compensation, right? And finally, if they play bishop e3, you just play knight f5 and say, man, what are you doing? At any point, I can go with like knight takes e3, queen d6, bishop d7, rook a to f8, and go against the e3 pawn. Finally, if they go castles, this is my uh, main idea. You sack on f3, you play knight d4. Uh, you cannot even imagine how many times I've played my games like this. If queen d5, you take and bishop is taking on b5. So they can't play this. If queen d3, you just play e5. And afterwards, uh, lots of guys went for knight d5 in blitz against me. Like, if you take, they're just going to win the queen. We won't do it. We play bishop f5. And we go with bishop e6 and win the knight. Bye-bye. See you next time, baby, when you learn the line. And that's why they got to go with queen d1. You play what? You play e5. They go rook e1. Uh, mostly my opponents went with this. Like, let's keep the light square bishop. Let's keep the bishops. I don't care. Bishop e6 over protecting on d5. And when you play like bishop e3, knight h and f5. Look at this. An amazing compensation. If knight b5, be my guest. Knight h to f5, controlling the knight on d4. And finally, when they play rook to e1, instead of bishop a4, we just play knight, knight h to f5. Uh, I was just trying to be a little bit faster so you can always pause the video and uh, make sure to uh, repeat and understand better all these ideas. Hope that you like this presentation. I really like this system with g6 and wish you the best of luck in the future. Enjoying your Alapin Sicilian g6, uh, you know, like uh, stories in the future. All the best and see you next time.